Hi guys, it's Marianne from Thrive Admin Services and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the Q&A function in your Microsoft Teams meetings. This is different to the chat and I want to show you how it can give you more structure and control over the conversation and flow and help you to generate more of a structured response system than perhaps you might normally get in the chat. So let's jump over into Teams and have a look. So the first part that we're going to talk about is what the Q&A is and how you access it. So it's an extra function in your Microsoft Teams meetings and it lets you manage questions from your attendees or the participants as an organiser in a specific and sort of se separate section to the regular chat. And it's really good for large meetings, it's perfect for webinars, but it's also really good where you want to be able to answer things in real time and create a thread attached to those questions. So what you'll find is that um, I've got an example here of a meeting that I've hosted. This is my monthly academy coaching session. So you see, this is the chat function. And what happens here is that we've got everybody who's joined and all of the different um, comments that people pop in. And when there's commenting on them, you can comment in the chat and pop a comment in. You can react as a participant. But what happens is that then we have this alternate option, which is our Q&A. And that's a separate section. So you can see it comes up up here on this version. And what it does is you can see I've, I've had it in effect for this uh, coaching call. And what it does is it breaks things down into different sections. So we've got comments. Uh, this one, we've got different comments. We've got different people who've reacted. And I can have a look at this and I can close this one or I can pin it. So we've got some, uh, we've got a link here. We've got here someone else. Uh, popping some comments in. If they want to ask a question, they can set them up. So they can ask questions. And if you see here, it allows them to ask a question. And it also allows attendees to reply to questions. So you can create threads within those questions. And then you can also do it anonymously, which is the big difference between the chat and the Q&A. So if you've got a group of people and you may not, your attendees may not want to be uh, identified by the question that they're asking this is a great way to do that and then you can also moderate things which allows you to review your questions before approving or rejecting them to go into into this forum so it gives you a lot more control the chat is open to everyone who attends and is a little bit more free-flowing and a little bit more conversational it is a chat function as opposed to a specific question and answer forum so that's the key difference, and it's it's the kind of thing you should think about if you're wanting to create a more structured thread formula, if you're wanting to have people respond to specific questions that you pose or that a moderator poses or that even one of your co-organisers can manage for you in a session. And it means that you can then group responses under topics and threads as well instead of it being this sort of large mass that you'll have to work through manually. So in the next section, I'm going to show you how we activate it in our set, in our meetings. So now we're going to have a look at how we would go ahead to create our Q&A session in a meeting. So I'm going to create a new meeting. That's how popping up on my other. I'm also just going to call this meeting with. Q and A. Okay, um, and I'm going to pop this one in for later this afternoon for half an hour. <clears throat> Pardon me. Can we go options? Um, more options and you can see as we scroll down here so this is these are the settings that you would normally find in the meeting and we've got cameras and mics recording meeting chat is on and then we've got the Q&A and we can turn it on here now often you might want to keep the chat for the informal stuff and then keep the Q&A for your questions or you can turn it off completely or you can make it so that it's only in the meeting and people can't access it afterwards. That's entirely up to you. So we'll go save and save. So we've now created this meeting. I'm going to jump into it now. 
join. And I've got my other screen all the time, which is really, really enjoyable. So I'm going to go join now. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see we've now got this little tab up here called Q&A because it was activated at the time the meeting started. So I'm going to open this up so you can see how this works in the meeting as well. So the first thing you'll notice is that if I go to the chat, the chat showing that I'm here, this is what it's named and this is when it started. And then when I go to the Q&A, there's none of that kind of running history of the the meeting. This is purely about the questions and answers that are happening in the session. So it will set, it will fire itself up. So we can create a post. I can start a discussion. I can ask a question or I can start a discussion. And there are some settings here that I can then adjust. So I can make it so that people can or cannot make anonymous posts. Um, so if we do this one, allow attendees to ask anonymous posts when it's enabled. So um, when it's dark, it will be enabled and we can moderate questions, which means that they would need to be reviewed. Okay. So at this stage replies won't be moderated and this can't be turned off once you turn it on. So you, that decision is one time for the entire meeting. So once you turn that on, you won't be able to turn it off again. So I'm going to save this. And if we go start a discussion, I can pop something in here. And you'll see that I've got the option to make it a discussion or a question at any point before I post it. And I can make it into a bullet or numbered list as well. Uh, so this is the Q&A section. Please add a new post with any questions you might have for me to cover in our time together. Now we can post it anonymously, just so you can see it. And I can also um, highlight, I can make some of this bold, so I can format some of these things this way. So if we post this, what you'll see come up is that it's been added into this thread. People who are here can now uh, react to it or they can comment on it and add a comment specifically as well. If I was to ask a question, when we ask a question, I can say, um, We can ask what is the use of the Q&A. Again, I could, um, you can pop a link in there as well in your question, which is quite handy. Bold italics and again, your ordered list. So if we do it this way and you'll see what happens as it comes up this way, I can edit that because I own it. I can pin it. We can close it, but I can also comment on it. So I can say, yep, that's great. And then I might comment and respond to the question. Um, and I might respond by saying, how we create a thread of answers so that they sit under the correct topic. So if I post this, you'll see it sits under here. It's not sitting in the, the line like it would with perhaps uh, the chat where it's just in a, a, a chronological order of when it appears. So if I was to um, respond, I can correct that as well, but if I was to respond as well, go and post that will also show up as a thread. So what you end up with is a question and then all of the answers, which is really handy as an uh, as a manager or an organizer of a meeting because you can come back and collate all that information and use it in other ways later instead of trying to figure out which comments go with which particular question. Alrighty. So there you have it. That is the Q&A function in Microsoft Teams. It's a handy tool to use if you're looking for something that's going to group responses in terms of answers to questions or a thread style, as opposed to that pure chronological chat function, which means you can't necessarily see which comments and responses from your attendees are attached to which question or statement. So check it out. Remember that you need to set it up and activate it 
prior to your meeting starting and if you want to moderate it that once you choose to moderate it, you won't be able to turn that set that setting off for that session have a go see what you think of it and let me know